Welcome back guys. So this week we're going to talk about the evolution of vertebrates and uh, I have a what was previously a warm-up um, it's just sort of a brain teaser to get you started uh, about the evolutionary history of vertebrates. So the second one that uh, has enlarged is the actual uh, it's the most simplified phylogeny of vertebrates uh, that you could possibly make. So you have fish that gave rise to amphibians, amphibians that gave rise to reptiles, and then there's two different lineages. Uh, reptiles gave rise to both birds and mammals. So all vertebrates have a backbone. It includes fish, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and birds. So vertebrates are part of a phylum called chordata, and that means we are chordates. All chordates have bilateral symmetry. So the next, if you remember from the invertebrate phylogeny, uh, the next closest relative would have been echinoderms. So next was chordates. Um, we have bilateral symmetry, uh, which means we have cephalization for, for most of them, um, a head region and their deuterostomes, which means the anus forms first. And uh, the two most rudimentary forms are tunicates and lancelets. So this is a tunicate, also known as a sea squirt, and this is a lancelet. Derived characters that all chordates have are a notochord, which is uh, kind of like the predecessor to a backbone, a nerve cord, the predecessor to uh, the spinal cord, pharyngeal slits, which becomes gills in some, and a post-anal tail, which means the tail extends past the anus. A little bit more about the notochord. Like I said, it's, uh, it's the predecessor to uh, the uh, vertebral column. So you see this in all chordates, and you might wonder, okay, so what about vertebrates? Um, do they have a notochord? Uh, they do. During embryologic development, uh, they do have what's a notochord, which is just a flexible rod. Um, and it does eventually turn into uh, the vertebral column. So the thing about the derived characters for chordates is that they have these characteristics at some point during their lifetime, but not during all stages. Nerve cord, same thing. Um, they do have a nerve cord during embryologic development. Um, in the uh, tunica and the lancelet, they, they do have a, a legitimate just nerve cord and notochord. Um, even in the adults, but for um, for vertebrates, for animals that have a backbone, they'll have these uh, traits uh, in the embryos. And the pharyngeal slits, so they can be uh, used as filter feeding structures in the tunicates and lancelets. Uh, they can be they can give rise to gills in fish, and uh, they can become part of the middle ear and even the jaw bones in animals called tetrapods, which are animals that have four limbs. That includes the birds, amphibians, mammals, and reptiles. The post-anal tail is just where the tail extends past the anus. And you might be thinking, well, we don't really have tails. Uh, but you do have a tail during embryologic development. So I like this diagram. It's just showing you a couple different animals um, during embryologic development. We've got a, uh, a bird. I think that's a chicken, actually. A turtle, uh, salamander, fish. So, um, but it, in early development, they all look the same. They all have that long tail. Okay, so let's talk specifically about lancelets. Uh, they kind of wedge themselves in the sand and the ocean, and they filter feed. So you can see they've got these pharyngeal slits right there. You can see their notochord and their nerve cord that run the length of the body. Um, and they have a postanal tail. They're very simple. They're the, the simplest of all chordates. 
Tunicates are kind of a step up from lancelets as far as chordates go. Uh, and they actually only have all of the traits of a chordate in the larval stage. As an adult, they're sessile uh, filter feeding organisms. And um, in the larval stage, so here's the adult. Uh, in the larval stage, uh, they have all the traits. They have the nerve cord, notochord, tail, uh, pharyngeal slits, uh, and they look completely different as an adult. So now we're going to take another step up on the phylogeny of chordates, and we're going to look at uh, animals that have a cranium. So they actually have a skull, they have specialized sense organs on that skull, and uh, we'll also see the development of a jaw later on. So some features that unite all animals that have a cranium, um, they have this uh, feature called a neural crest that gives rise to parts of the face um, that are, are uh, locations of, of specialized senses like smell, um, taste, vision, uh, and they also give rise to teeth. Uh, we have gills instead of filter feeding. They're more muscular. Uh, they have a higher metabolism than the lancelets and the tunicates. They have a closed circulatory system with at least uh, two chambers in the heart. And you can see one atrium and one ventricle. Uh, they have hemoglobin to carry oxygen in the blood. And they have ki uh, kidneys that help them regulate, uh, clean their blood and regulate uh, the amount of water in their body. So much more sophisticated than the lancelets and uh, the tunicates. Just an aside on gills, so they're, they're thin tissue that's lined with capillaries and muscles in the body wall help push water over them. And um, also when they're swimming, that pushes water over them in the opposite direction that blood is flowing. It's called counter current blood flow. And that just increases um, the amount of oxygen that they can get into their blood. So um, because they're lined with capillaries, uh, that's how they absorb dissolved oxygen in the water into their bloodstream. So uh, the first craniate we're going to look at doesn't have a backbone. It's called a hagfish. And these guys are pretty neat. They have these little mucus glands where they can um, produce a lot of mucus if another animal catches them. And the mucus actually uh, clogs up the gills of uh, fish that are trying to eat them. And it's used as protection. All right, so now we'll look at animals that actually have a backbone. And they're all going to have the uh, vertebral column that protects their spinal cord. They have a more elaborate skull, which means more elaborate senses. Um, and the aquatic forms are going to have uh, fins. So we're moving up uh, another step on the uh, chordate phylogeny, and we're going to look at lampreys. So lampreys, um, they have a backbone, they have a cranium, they do not have jaws. So you can see they're, they have sort of like a sucker-like mouth um, that's covered in rows and rows and rows of keratinized teeth. Okay, so moving on. Now we have vertebrates. Um, that have a cranium, uh, and they also have jaws, and they're, they're called nathostomes. And the jaws are, are uh, actually originated from uh, the gill, or, or the pharyngeal slits in the embryo. So they have a better developed brain, um, better smell, better vision. Um, they also have this uh, special, just for the aquatic ones, um, they have a lateral line system. And the lateral line system is sort of like a uh, distant touch. So it allows them to feel vibrations in the water. So our, our first group that we're going to look at are cartilaginous fish, or chondrichthians. Uh, chondrichthians include sharks, rays, skates, and ratfishes. Um, they're all predatory. And they all have a skeleton made of cartilage. Um, not to say that it's not hard. Um, it's not cartilage like in your ear or your nose. 
Uh, it's it's harder than that. Osteichthyans are bony fish, and that includes most of the fish that. Most osteichthyans or bony fish have an operculum that covers their gills, and they have a swim bladder that helps them to um, control their buoyancy. The more familiar group would be the ray fin fishes. So they have these uh, long, flexible rays in their fins that help them maneuver, helps them move around. They can um, evade predators, or if they are predatory, it helps them to catch their prey. Now, the less familiar group would be the lobe fin fishes, and they have these muscular, fleshy uh, fins. And this one is the coelacanth, and it was actually thought to be extinct for a while, and then they found one in the Indian Ocean. Um, but they do have these fleshy uh, fins, and um, the one that you're, it's difficult to see because I know my face is in the corner, but um, that's called a lungfish. Uh, and lungfish do have lungs, and um, they can survive on land for short periods, um, they can sort of hop around. And scientists think that um, there was a lineage of lobe fin fishes uh, that gave rise to tetrapods. And the first group that they gave rise to were amphibians. And amphibian means both ways of life. So uh, they get, a lot of them live uh, in land and in water during different parts of their life. And um, some of them, you know, just on a daily basis live on land and in water. So. So we'll be referring to this phylogeny quite a bit um, as we move through all the different types of vertebrates, um, starting with uh, the first uh, fish on the phylogeny that has a vertebral column, but no jaws. Uh, that's going to be the lamprey. That's the, the gross guy with the round sucker-like mouth with all the keratinized teeth. Um, and then we have in the jawed group, uh, we start with chondrichthyans, the ones that have a, a cartilaginous skeleton. Then we have osteichthyans, uh, which gave rise to amphibians. So on our next PowerPoint, we'll talk about amphibians, we'll talk about reptiles, birds, and mammals.